right. Um, once again, thank you, um, Jackie, for giving me opportunity to do this presentation today. And uh, I can see that uh, Daniel, uh, who works with uh, the enterprise, has covered a beautiful part of this presentation, you know, telling you what it feels like to be an employee of um, Santa Clara Valley Medical Center Hospitals and Clinics. Great organization to work for, uh, and I can attest to that because I have been with them for so many years. I can tell you all about myself later. So as you all know, um, this is a county-owned uh, hospital, and uh, it is um, comprised of um, three hospitals and 11 health centers. So um, the main campus, uh, which is formerly you know, the well-known Aquara Valley Medical Centers, most of you will know, uh, people call it BMC, is located in San Jose on Bascom Avenue. In the uh, past few years, we acquired Okano Hospital and St. Louis Regional Hospital. So I was so glad when I saw Daniel's presentation this morning and uh, all the good work they are doing in the hospital. My clinic, Valley Health Center Giroy, happens to mm -hmm. be one of the 11 health centers um, the enterprise has, and uh, we are located here in Gilroy. Um, most of the clinics are down in San Jose, and we range from south and uh, north San Jose, from Sunnyvale, all the way to Neopites. It doesn't matter which part of the county you live in, you will always have a Valley Health Center Gilroy clinic uh, close to you to receive care. The main campus, which is the San Clara Valley Medical Center in San Jose, is a huge facility. I don't know if any of you have had time to take a, a road trip to that campus. It is huge. I used to work there for so many years, and it amazed me you know, how the hospital has transformed itself to one of the leading centers in, the, in, in, in California, as well as the country. Uh, it is made up of uh, 731 beds, and uh, it's one of the largest uh, county-owned hospitals in the state. Um, as most of you know, it's a teaching hospital because we do get uh, medical students, uh, nursing students, respiratory students, pharmacy students. They all come there to get their clinical training, which is very important to be a well-rounded uh, practitioner. You have to have your training in a very known, good, managed uh, center. It's a level one trauma center, which as I, when I used to work in, uh, on that main campus, it was one of my prides, you know, working in a level one trauma center. Because for those of us that live here, you need to know that there is a level one trauma center in your area should anything unfortunate called accidents happen, that you, there is a place where you'll be taken and all the necessary uh, resources and staff are there to take care of you. Mm -hmm. It's a pediatric level two trauma center. Uh, the Bond Center there, which used to be my former home, is one of the best known bond centers around the world. Its rehab center is also well known. The stroke center, the neonatal um, intensive care units, we are baby friendly certified, and uh, there is also an acute and emergency and acute uh, psychiatric services. Uh, this is a picture of uh, one of the um, rehab uh, stories we have, you know, people getting their rehab um, after a traumatic uh, spinal cord or brain injury, you go through the rehab center and uh, the caring staff there helps to take care of the patient with all the innovations that they are working with will bring the person back to uh, as near normal as possible to be to continue to be a functioning member of the community or society. Uh, 
And I'm proud to tell you that, of, uh, as I said earlier, it's a teaching hospital. And we cannot be a teaching hospital without uh, the support of our board of supervisors. They are supportive of all the things that uh, the enterprise is doing, whether um, it's a you know, student at the main campus, the VMC, or at Okano, or down here at uh, St. Louis Regional Hospital. The board of supervisors are 100% in support of all the things we do. Alcama used to be a privately owned hospital, um, but uh, it's been there for a very, very long time, as far back as 1889. Uh, it is comprised of 358 beds, and it is also a huge uh, bedding center for those who have been there. A lot of babies have been delivered at Alcama Hospital, just like a BMC. But a few years ago, VMC uh, acquired it, the county acquired it and added it to its own uh, community hospital. And it has been thriving since we acquired it. Same as St. Louis, uh, for over the years, and uh, when I moved over to South County, because I live in this community, one of the biggest challenges we have, um, especially for those uh, who don't have private insurance, uh, for those who have private insurance or don't have insurance at all, if you are sick, it's extremely difficult to get to San Jose to get care. But um, a majority of them were going to St. Louis, which was a privately owned hospital at that time. They were getting some bills, but uh, the, the last few years, the county acquired St. Louis as well. And I can tell you that uh, since they acquired it, we are delivering a lot of babies there. It is a nitrate bed uh, facility. And uh, just like uh, Daniel earlier stated, a lot of good nursing care is going on there. And, you know, as she was talking and telling all the GAV students that were hired and are still working there, it's really um, heartwarming to hear that for those who live in this part of the county, you go to school in this community, you graduate and you get a job within your community, you care for your people, there's nothing as gravitating as that. So I am very, very proud of all the staff at St. Louis, and we are doing a lot of collaborative effort between the hospital and the clinic here at Valley Health Center, Giroy. So uh, going back into, okay, the nursing community, um, what do we do? Who, you know, how can you expand your wings once you get that your RN degree? Um, I can tell you that uh, the, I know GAV a lot because as uh, a bond center nurse, I used to come to GAV once a year or so to give a lecture on bond care. And I fell in love with the program. I happened to do my clinical study, um, my practical, when I was doing my MSN in nursing education with uh, GAV instructor, Susan Turner. And I'm so grateful to her and all the GAV and, Staff. And it's also important to note that some of your students are still are coming to our enterprise to get their clinical practices, and that door is still open because it's a major collaboration. I believe that in order to have a healthy workforce, it starts with education, and God is doing that best, and we are looking for the best hospitals to send your students to receive their clinical, um, to receive their clinical uh, practices. And uh, our enterprise is open to that. It's also important to know that after you graduate, you can get a job with three hospitals and 11 health centers. There is a job for everyone within the enterprise. Uh, Danielle shared with you the process, what you need to do, where you can go to apply for that job. And once you get in, the possibilities are endless. This particular screen I am sharing shows you all the aspects of nursing practice that is within this enterprise. 
from staff developer, which is uh, Daniel is one of to clinical mm -hmm. nurses. We got nurse specialists, nurse coordinators, nurse practitioners, assistant nurse managers, which is my role. We also have nurse managers, directors, infection prevention, public health. Yes, we do have um, public health um, services because uh, it's part of the enterprise uh, organization. Quality improvement. Utilization management, case management, administration, and behavioral health. So all these things are all part of the nursing. And once you come in, you can spread your wings to any of uh, these uh, nursing areas. A great, great enterprise to work and grow in. And we did also develop our own nursing uh, professional practice model, which was picked up from all the major professional uh, practice modules out there. As nursing students, I know you all have gone through or maybe will be going through the, uh, um, the uh, nursing professional uh, practice modules. You know, the most popular ones, the Benners, the Watsons, the Orens, the Orots. And I love all of them because in each of them, as a student nurse, you realize that a nursing is just a, you know, caring for somebody that is sick, but how do you make that your care become holistic? That is where all this, uh, where the professional nursing practice comes in. And for you students, I really would like you to pay attention when you are going through the uh, professional practice modules because that would determine and define you what kind of nurse you are going to be, what kind of care you are going to give to your patients and how you yourself as a nurse take care of yourself and also grow in the profession you have chosen to be. So we also talk about, okay, we hire all these new nurses. Do we just throw them in the departments to go and start taking care of people? No, uh, we make sure that uh, for every newly hired nurse, that that nurse goes through uh, the training to be well equipped to take care of uh, the patients he or she is going to take care of. So, um, you know, I know, you know, some people will say, oh, nobody hires new grads anymore. They're all looking for experiences and all that. Uh, Danielle did touch a little bit on that, where you, when you get into the hiring uh, website, um, as a new grad, you'll be looking for a clean one, a clinical nurse one, because as a new grad, you wouldn't expect to be hired into a clinical level two or clinical level three. Those are for advanced, uh, uh, I mean, competent and the proficient nurses. But for a new grad nurse, you are still a novice nurse, you are going to be hired into a clean one and be trained. And from there, you will grow to become proficient and competent and expert and all that. So these are the areas um, you can be hired, you know, you can look for opportunity. In. We have acute rehab center, operating room, emergency room, med surge uh, departments, uh, medical ICU, surgical ICU, trauma ICU, cardiac ICU, burn um, care units. Um, we also do have the emergency and acute psychiatric services. Um, our, family or, you know, some people call it a family center, some people call it mother and baby care center. It's all encompassed. And we are talking about a labor and delivery, infant care services, neonatal intensive care services, pediatric and PBICUs. And of course, you come into the ambulatory care because all these inpatient services, when patients go home, they, their care still has to have to continue on ambulatory care services. And, and that's where the ambulatory care services come in. Um, most of us um, are what I call a one-stop shop. Like if you come into Giroy, uh, Valley uh, Health Center Giroy, it doesn't matter whether you are a newborn that is a one day old or 100 plus year old, you will get your services in Giroy. Um, because we have internal medicine, family practice, pediatrics, OB, 
um, G O B G Y N care, whether you are pregnant or you are having some gynae issues, and we do have behavioral health uh, too. So it is a we call it a primary care center where you get all the care you need in one place. So again, as I said, do you get thrown into clinical practice without training? No. We don't do that. So if you are hired into the ICU, um, depending on where your area of hire is, will determine the level of orientation you are going to get. If you are in the ICU, you may get up to 12 to 13 weeks of orientation, and that is an intensive orientation because you're going to be like you're going back into the classroom to get to refresh your theory. And then you go into the clean, in, into the unit to get a hands on. So think of your skills. Think of when you were practicing in skills lab or during your practicum, you were doing your clinicals. Now you are dedicated to hands on. Everything you have learned in classroom, you are going to start practicing it. It is an intensive orientation. And for those who have had the privilege to go through um, ICU training at Valley Health Center, at Valley Medical Center, do appreciate it because it is one of the places that will give you that intensive ICU training that you need to jumpstart your career as an ICU nurse. If you are hired into the med surge uh, department, that training is about uh, six to eight weeks as well. The same thing to ambulatory setting. Again, we take it one individual at a time. Some people will, within six weeks, they are up and running. Some people will take a little longer. We do appreciate that, but at the end of the day, what we want is that everyone is trying to be competent and provide a holistically compassionate care to every patient. So I just talked about this, you know, the type of um, training you get. And I also want to mention that in why you are getting all this training, you are getting all the support you need from the managers, from the NMs, and you will be also assigned a preceptor and a mentor. Um, I, when I saw this, I'm like, okay, mentor. People talk about mentorship a lot. Where does mentorship come in? I know for new grads, uh, you are coming out from school. You don't know what to ask or what to need. But one of the things that you are being trained is to ask questions, know what you need, and they go there and get it. So when you are assigned a mentorship, know that it's a two-way traffic. You need to come up with your need and share that with your mentor so that both of you will be at the same page. Your mentor is not going to do the work for you, but will be there to guide you on how to navigate and become a much, much better nurse. And we do have the staff developers like Daniel, who is going to also support your preceptor throughout this journey. Angela, you're running over on time. If you could. Um, okay, um, I'm almost skip. done. Okay, great. Thank you. So, this is a picture of a message, the only picture I have. <laughs> and uh, Danielle went through this process with you where you are going to go and apply. But first of all, you need to sign up into this uh, website, the SCC uh, job, and create your own account. And I will say, if you create that account, make sure that you, you know, click at the point that says, alert me with jobs, so that anytime there is a clean one job, you'll be alerted and you can go in and apply. Okay, so I said sccjobs.org and create your own account at NeoGov. And then uh, we do have a recruitment team. They are based in San Jose. And when you apply, you apply for a job, your application will go to them and they will sort it out and send it to hiring managers. And from there, they will take it on. And I'm open for any question. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you, Angela. 
Thank you for that very informative last slideshow and we appreciate you coming today. She does uh, have a question, Jackie. And there is a question in the board. Let's see. Ava, what's the question we have? Yes, the question is, is this site the same for hiring CNAs? For hiring CNAs, yes, it is the same site for hiring CNAs, LDNs, every job. So if you go into um, www.scc.gov.job, that you'll be looking for an open competitive um, icon. So you click on open competitive, it will tell you all the jobs that are available, whether it's a master assistant job or uh, LBN job or RN job or other kinds of jobs that are not nursing related for non nursing um, staff or job seekers, yeah, candidates. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question? Another question? Okay, no other question. Okay. No other questions. No other question at this time. Okay, okay. we will proceed on thank to- Thank you. Thank you. 